Reverend Fathers, Father Deacon, parishioners, and guests, welcome, and thank you for coming out on such a uh, wonderful night for this evening's talk. <laughs> Our speaker is Archpriest Michael Hyduke. He's a cellist for the uh, Commission of Doctrine and Worship of the Eparchy of Parma. And Father Hyduke is well known to many of us, and I'm sure we're going to enjoy his talk. It's entitled About St. John Chrysostom, His Life and Times. Thank you. Thank you for coming out on such a glorious evening. <laughs> what normally would take about 45 minutes from Parma, as it took me an hour and a half at least. Oh, boy, it was terrible. Shall we stand in prayer? We'll start with the Troparium to St. John Chrysostom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace that shines forth from your mouth like a torch has enlightened the universe. It implanted in the world the treasure of love of poverty. It showed us the high value of humility. Instruct us by your words, John Chrysostom, our Father, and intercede with the word, Christ our God, for the salvation of our souls. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I have a very formidable task this evening because I taught this course at the cathedral in October and it was five weeks, an hour and a half each week. So that means I have over six hours of notes to do. <laughs> <laughs> so my job is to condense them and get them down into a reasonable capsulized size that you can cope with. But what I'd like to do, John Chrysostom was not only one of my favorite church fathers in the seminary, but a lot of times when we hear about these great saints or the fathers of the church, and they say, oh, they're, they're so holy, they had no problems, uh, no confrontations. Well, when you hear some of the stuff that's going on, well, number one, think about the world today, think about the church today, and, you know, I think sometimes things were a little bit worse. So, uh, a couple things that we, we should do is to keep that in mind, that I want to make John Chrysostom a real human person for you. And if I could do that, then our time together will be a success. Now, if you look up the word Byzantine as a adjective, not the proper adjective like Byzantine Empire or Byzantine Rite, but lowercase Byzantine, in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, one definition is of or relating to or characterized by a devious and unusually surreptitious manner of operation, intrigue, intricately enveloped, calculating, devious and complex. <laughs> so this evening, you'll see how this definition comes true in the life and times of John Chrysostom. We in America, you know, we're so used to the separation of church and state. In this time period, you know, they were in bed with each other back and forth. And so, you know, who was influencing who is hard to tell at some time. Now, if any of you had me in any previous class, you know that I'm certainly not going to exhaust all the subject matter in, in one session. What I'd like to do is kind of uh, pick your mind and decide to get, get your interest. And if any of these topics then uh, touch you or you want to pursue a little further, then you can do this and go to any of the reference books or the internet, and you can do it with a little bit of integrity and know what you're looking for. So we're certainly not going to accomplish the life and times of John Chrysostom in one night. In fact, in the seminary, this was a one-semester course. Okay? So you got a little bit of the groundwork we're going to be covering. Now, one nice thing about this, we're not going to be taking exams or doing a term paper. So relax and try to enter the real-world situation of John Chrysostom. You don't need to remember all the names and all the places, you can always look those up. 
And if I use terminology you do not understand, please raise your hand and I'll try to explain. And if I don't know, I'll tell you and uh, do further research and I'll get back to you. The study of the Church Fathers is called patrology, and as an adjective, it's called patristic. Okay, now let's see. Like I said, I'm going to be kind of editing as we go along. St. John Chrysostom, by the way, Chrysostom wasn't his last name. That was an adjective given to him. It means golden mouth because of his eloquence of preaching and teaching. He came into the world about 347 to wealthy parents in the city of Antioch, which is in present-day Syria. He studied in the finest schools of Antioch, specializing in rhetoric. Now, we don't really have that in America, but really, it's the art of public speaking, grammar, diction, and logic all rolled into one. Most students in this discipline became lawyers or government officials. So like a lawyer today, you know, you're trying to build your case on logic and fact, and so that's what he was studying. And at first, that looked like this was going to be his destined career. However, he was captivated by the saintly elderly bishop of his city. Now this bishop was not very well educated, but his love of God, simplicity of life, and dedication to the poor inspired John so much that he entered monastic life. He lived with extremely harsh monastic practices and became a hermit living in the hills. He spent the next two years continually standing, scarcely sleeping, eating only one sparse meal a day, and studying the scripture so much that he knew the entire New Testament by heart. Folks, he knew this book by heart. And as someone said in my other class, yeah, he knew it in Greek. <laughs> He also knew large chunks of the Old Testament as well, and his love of the Bible would remain a constant tool in his ministry at Ed. And as a consequence, though, of these harsh monastic practices, his stomach and kidneys were permanently damaged, and poor health forced him to return to Antioch. And he wanted to stay a secluded monk, and in fact, uh, he even ran away from his diaconate ordination at first. And after a lot of prayer and persuasion, he was ordained a deacon and then eventually a priest. As a priest in Antioch for 12 years, John gained popularity because of the eloquence of his preaching. His style was direct. He did not like that real heady philosophy or theology. His theology and preaching were very practical, and everyday people could understand and apply his message to their own lives easily. And it's interesting. He complains about people coming late to church and leaving early. He rails against those going to racetracks and theaters instead of going to the Lenten services. And he also railroads people about pickpocketing during the sermon. <laughs> well, you have to remember what was going on at this time. Uh, you know, of course, I used to preach, and you know, the, the, the priest or deacon are up here, and, and you're down in the pew. It wasn't that way. There were no pews. Now, originally, the preaching style, at least in cathedrals, was behind the altar. The icon screen was rather low. The chair was very high, and so the bishop would, would preach from up there, overlooking the crowds. He was seated, and the people were standing. Now we do the opposite. The preacher stands, and, and you sit. <laughs> but anyway, John didn't really kind of like that style. He wanted to be out among the people, 
And so he would go out to the uh, what's called the, the Solea and the Ambon. It's not quite like what we have today. You know, in churches uh, where you go to communion, you have that little circular step in front. Well, in ancient churches, it was rather like a long Miss America runway. Okay, <laughs> so you could walk right out there. And so, and he would preach that way. Well, if he's preaching that way and you have no pews, you could see people pickpocketing. <laughs> no, 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 you can put it down. So that, that's what was going on. And he also emphasized, besides Bible reading, charitable giving was a big concern of his. And the temporal needs of the poor. He spoke out against the abuse of, the, of wealth and personal property. He established hospitals, orphanages, and care for widows. Now remember, at this time, the government didn't do such things. It was the job of the church. 